really liked that flagpole. So I said, I'll put you by the flagpole, and I said, I'll even do one better. I said, I'm gonna get 21 guns to loot for you. He says, ah, you don't have to do that. And we weren't there more than a couple minutes, and Dan hooked up with a 29-inch walleye. It directly contributed to my decision to pick up a camera and ultimately make the show that you're now watching. Funding for this program was provided by the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, Safe Basements of Minnesota, your basement waterproofing and foundation repair specialist since 1990. Peace of mind is a safe basement. Live wide open. The more people know about West Central Minnesota, the more reasons they have to live here. More at livewideopen.com. Western Minnesota Prairie Waters, where peace, relaxation, and opportunities await. If you've ever watched the sunset at Arneson's Rocky Point at Lake of the Woods, you've seen this flag blowing in the wind. You may have noticed the memorial at its base. These are symbols that represent our freedoms and those who have fought for our rights as Americans. My dad and uncle constructed that and put it up. My dad served in the Merchant Marine and my uncle served in the Army in the South Pacific, so uh, for their legacy, it's very important to us to honor these people. This year, a new memorial was placed on the Rockline Harbor, all part of an annual veterans event aimed at saying thanks. This is our sixth year of doing this. Yeah, it was supposed to just start with two, um, and that ended up to be 20, and then it was 30, then it went to 40, 50, and now we're at 60 each year. Drifting? Yeah. Getting anything? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Spinners or what? No. <laughs> Marking a lot of nice fish on the graph, which is encouraging. Jesse Tintis attends as a veteran who also volunteers to take other veterans out fishing. Gosh, it's been around 10 years ago. Uh, our family uh, decided to, we, we really enjoyed taking people out fishing. Uh, especially people that maybe don't get a chance to get out fishing. Jesse runs an organization called Tintus Outdoors, which works with volunteer organizations to take veterans, first responders, and kids fishing. We didn't we didn't really think we were going to be as affected. We thought we were trying to get out and help these, these, these veterans out, and you start hearing these stories of these Vietnam vets that have never talked about their time when they got back from the service, went into the airport bathroom and took off their uniform and threw it in the garbage, and then... Uh, uh, put on civilian clothes so nobody would know that they were part of the Vietnam War. These guys have never had a chance to tell their story, so they get out on the these boats away from everybody else or sitting back at the lodge and being able to talk to other veterans. Internally, you can tell that these events have, have, have changed their life. Jesse was with his wife, Brandy, and her father, Gordy, who lives near Montevideo, Minnesota. I'll get one. No pressure, Gordy. Camera's on. <laughs> It's neat. You meet friends, you know, get to be friends, and yeah, it's cool. He never ever talked about it. We didn't know what he did. Uh, I was 18. It was in 61. And here, a few years back, when we started coming up to this event, I, you know, I'd asked him, you know, why don't you ever talk about being a veteran or anything like that? And he says, well, I didn't have a very important job. Worked in the survival department and packed parachutes. And I'm like, there isn't a more important job out there than packing parachutes, you think about it. When you're packing a parachute, every single time that that, that jumper goes out, it's a life or death situation because that had to have been done very precise and had to have been done well too. And I'm glad I did and served my country. That is fun when you get a wall out of fight. <laughs> oh, nice one. Hey, shit. Too nice. I don't think that's gonna make it. 25 on the nose. Mm. Nice job. Good job 
So who's just catching all the fish here in the boat? So I, I always, you, you always talk. Seriously, <laughs> Brett, come on. Who's catching all? That's a nice, nice sauger. That's an eater sauger. What question did I ask you right before? You asked me, so who is this down here that's been catching all the fish? And it wasn't set up. That was like perfect timing. Last night, we're getting ready to go to bed. Well, actually, we weren't even getting ready to go to bed. It was 8 o'clock, and she comes up to me. She goes, you know, I'm tired from catching all those fish yesterday. I'm going to go to bed. Can you get me an ice pack? My shoulder is really, really sore. Oh, she yeah. loves to trash talk with our, we have three boys. And uh, that's because I learned it from my dad. Learned it from Gordy? Yeah, exactly. You can learn a lot from the selfless acts of volunteers like Jesse and Lance, who understand the importance of veteran events. One of the things that they do up at Camp Ripley is they, they pair a, a seasoned veteran who's served, and they pair a new veteran together and it allows them to get out and, and talk and visit and, and uh, kind of share some stories. So that way those new veterans who just signed up get a chance to understand and to, uh, to know what, what, what some of these guys have gone through. While the fishing event has been going on for a number of years, Lance decided that this year would be a little different after meeting with one of his close friends. That's why he was there to say his last goodbyes because his cancer was back. Lance Peterson and Mark Bodie were best friends who grew up together in Woodlake, Minnesota. Every time I hear the song, Who Made Who, ACDC, I think of Mark, every single time. We were at a tanker. <laughs> <laughs> we were drinking quite heavily. I can know that. <laughs> you can know now, Mom, we're in our 50s. <laughs> Just where you seen one, you seen the other. That's the way it was with Bingo. And he was a prankster. So I remember when I was like 10, we were walking into the Veterans Supper and they had Bingo going on there. And as we were checking in, they had just started that game of Bingo. So I knew there was only like two or three numbers that were called. And we were still in the entryway and they said, under the B, six. And my buddy, Mark, says, Bingo. And the guy says, hold your cards, folks, hold your cards, we got a bingo. Well, there was no way they could have a bingo because there was only three numbers drawn. <laughs> I said, you know, if you're gonna be cremated, buddy, I, I got a place for you. And he was really good with it. He said, that'd be awesome, because he doesn't have a place. He kind of mentioned he really liked that flagpole. So I said, I'll put you by the flagpole. And I said, I'll even do one better. I said, I'm gonna get 21 gun salute for you. He says, ah, you don't have to do that. And I said, you deserve it. Last year in August, after he passed, I uh, brought a stone from the harbor home and then I asked a friend of mine to drill into it. Mark's ashes were placed into the rock, along with Mark's dog tag. We take it for granted going out there on the lake every day, but if it wasn't for those guys, we wouldn't have that. So to give a little bit back, it's pretty awesome. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Navy, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for Mark's honorable and faithful service. Fields of plenty, far as I can see, 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Reaching to the sky, this land we love, America. Fair winds and following seas, Petty Officer Bodie. Thank you for your service to this country and living a great uh, life of great distinction. This land we love, America. Annual fishing trips are a tradition for a lot of people. Now our Amundsen annual fishing trip normally goes to Ontario, but because of border closures in recent years with Canada, we decided to get as close as possible and hit up that big walleye factory in northern Minnesota known as Lake of the Woods. Yeah, this place will do. Oh, I see. Yeah. You're not allowed out there. <laughs> Childproof locks are on. <laughs> we locked out and got to stay in one of the newest cabins at Arneson's Rocky Point at Lake of the Woods. And while we were unpacking, we were greeted by a few of the locals. Now we're gonna show you a couple of things in this episode. One, we're gonna show you how we caught some big, big walleyes at Lake of the Woods. You're gonna see what it's like to deal with family on a trip like this. And you'll also find out where my sense of humor comes from. Man, I haven't had so much fun since I Kicked an ice cube with my bare foot. That one's gonna be hard for time. Let's try this again. <laughs> Take two. Take 16. What do you want? Nothing. You can't be in the picture. You've already done this. I'm just gonna stand back. Sit down and don't make faces at me. We're also gonna try to settle one of the biggest debates in our family's history. Who has the real recipe for one of our favorite meals on these trips? <laughs> well, I don't, you must know this though, because I was collecting uh, all the recipes for the dumplings. <laughs> None of them are the same recipe. <laughs> so sit back and enjoy the annual Amundsen fishing trip to Lake of the Woods. We got uh, on fish right away this morning. Dan started popping a little sauger into the boat immediately. It was pretty good. Uh, using bottom bouncers and spinners, um, two ounce bottom bouncers, anywhere from gold to chartreuse to blue to green fire tiger blades. Um, just pulling those at 1.1 to 1.2, 3, 4, and uh, making contact with bottom in about 28 to 30 feet of water, and that's where we're finding our fish. And we weren't there more than a couple minutes and Dan hooked up with a 29 inch walleye. I got a hot tip about this spot a while ago actually. Um, and then a couple other people reaffirmed this spot. Finally found it on a map. No one would tell me where it was. Uh, finally found it on a map. I think what we were fishing for a, a minute, 30 seconds. I, it was quick and uh, hooked up and I knew it was a big fish right away. Um, and luckily had a good, had a good net man. He did a good job and it was a big fish, a lot of fun. Dan wasn't the only one to have success on our first day. Today, I got a 29 and a half incher, which is, I guess, about nine and a half pounds. Not only was it special for me to see him catch that walleye, but he did it out of my boat, which is his old boat, a boat that I spent so many years going on these Amundsen annual fishing trips and fishing out of. And not only did those trips lay a foundation for my love of the outdoors and introduce me to the highs and lows of walleye fishing, but it directly contributed to my decision to pick up a camera and ultimately make the show that you're now watching. Our family fishing trips have taken place for most of my life. Now, while the numbers have varied from year to year and the location changes every so often, the result was often the same. Lots of laughs, a few fish, and a lot of pictures those pictures would be put together in a produced slideshow by our photographer cousin, Scott. First off, I enjoyed taking photographs, enjoyed the outdoors, capturing those images was helping to tell a story and also to be able to show our moms our trip in the end. A good slideshow needs the perfect soundtrack. Luckily, we have a couple of DJs in the family, Craig and Chad, who worked for a company called Sound Entertainment. When we had the idea to um, put these slides together in a format with music, it made a lot of sense. 
it seems like every time we started one of those slideshows, it was, it, I would we would take photographs of us getting the cars ready, getting the boats ready, getting it hooked up. And there was always a song that kind of went along with that, which was King of the Road. There are three songs that I don't, if I hear them on the radio or wherever, TV commercial, whatever, yep. I think of the slideshows. And yes. I guarantee you, you guys probably know, I bet we could guess some of the same songs. Convoy. Okay, four songs. <laughs> yes, Convoy. Don't worry, be happy. There's one of them. <laughs> King of the Road. King, King of the, the Road. Road. And uh, Stand yeah. By Me. Oh, Stand by me. That's the one I, was I was thinking of Hank Jr. Well, Owen oh, Hank Jr. Family <laughs> Tradition. They're, yeah. all the year, I yep, I I they they're all from the same year, I think. They're all from the same slideshow. But as soon as I hear Convoy, I picture Chad and... On, on and the walkie-talkie. And yeah. Craig standing on the corner at <laughs> Grand Marais talking to that walkie-talkie outside the, the Beaver House there. Uh, and and, and Gil was in the phone with talking to Shirley. That's right. <laughs> that's right. The holiday. <laughs> These trips were great because it was a vacation for us where we could all relax, except Scott, who was working during his vacation. And then finally, one year, he decided to relax a little bit, and I don't blame him. I do remember bringing a smaller camera along and receiving a little bit of flack about it, too. Well, I decided the slideshow needed to continue, so the following year, I started taking more pictures and took over the duty of creating the slideshow. Now, if you combined all that, along with what Scott and Chad's uh, father, Gil, who was my uncle, and what he did for a job, you can pretty much explain how I got interested in doing what I do now. My dad was news director and anchor at WTCN-TV in Minneapolis. I'm Gil Amundsen, in for Kerry King. Is here. His voice and face have spanned the decades, but breaking into television was somewhat of a fluke for Gil. Before his time in Minneapolis on Channel 11, Gil spent time behind the microphone on radio stations in Marshall and Duluth. I'm Gil Amundsen. This is my boy, Scott. We're going fishing. We'd like to show you some reasons why you should, too. Gil had a big influence on me when it came to my career choices in life, and he always enjoyed these trips up north to spend time with family and go fishing in the North Woods. On day two of our fishing trip, we downsized from three boats to two, so we could all spend a little bit more time with each other. Craig, Denny, and I were in one boat while Wade, Dan, and Ron were in the other. And the fishing just kept getting better and better. It's my first trip to Lake of the Woods. So of all the, the years we've been fishing as a, as a family and trips that we've taken, it's first first time to fish the big water. I think it's pretty awesome. You know, I know that uh, we'd like to have a meal you know, if we can catch uh, enough for a meal, that, that's great, too. But, yeah, that, uh, the, the big fish make the trip. Meanwhile, in the other boat, they were doing just as well. Pretty much what we've been doing this whole trip is dragging spinners, two ounce bottom bouncers with crawlers, trying to work usually about 28 to 30 feet of water. We've had great luck. I mean, I think Dan has put in four or five slot fish already and uh, it was really hard to get eaters because he's been doing so well with the, the bigger fish. I think last night his first fish was 23, his second one was 22. So it's been a lot of fun. You know, and they're big, healthy fish. I mean, they're just really fun to see them come up out of the bottom. and. Uh, I mean, you, you can kind of get a feel it's going to be a pretty good fish, but once that thing really comes up into the net, um, when they look this healthy, this fat, it's really a fun trip. 27. 27. Success on Lake of the Woods can be attributed to a slot limit that protects walleyes between 19 and a half inches and 28 inches. That has increased the length of the average female walleye from 17 inches in 1982 to 26 inches, according to recent data. Doubling up. It has been a pretty unbelievable afternoon out here. You know, we came out this morning and caught some fish, caught a couple of eaters. It was, it was kind of slow, like even this trip so far, I don't want to say it's been slow because we've caught big fish. Like some of the big, some of the guys caught the biggest fish of their lives, but only one or two here and there. 
Today it started off with a couple liters, which we haven't been finding. This afternoon though, the wind laid down, a little front moved through, and we weren't quite sure how far out on the lake we wanted to go because there was still a threat of some more storms. So we kind of, we didn't go very far. And we have had some of the best walleye fishing we've ever had with some of the biggest walleyes. Uh, I mean, we were struggling to keep eaters. I think we caught one eater this afternoon and we've been pretty busy catching walleye. So yeah, it's been a good day and we're not done. It's been an incredible afternoon. And it was about to get even better. There it is, oh, nice walleye, nice fish, nice fish. Woo! That's a big one. That's a good one, boys. That's a beaut. That's gonna be upper, that might, that's gonna be 29, probably. What do you got here, Craig? Uh, 30-incher, really. Yeah. Even I got a nice fish before we headed in and started heating up the oil. There's a healthy Lake of the Woods walleye right there, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Look at that guy. Yeah. 26 nice inches. Uh, beautiful fish. Thank you very much. Good fight. On spinach, it's been a great day out here today. That's really good. Excellent. Want to get me instead of just a fish? <laughs> I'm getting you and the fish. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're going to be the star of the show. Our family slideshow has come a long ways, from the days of using office supplies for special effects. So he had a picture of a loon, and he literally took a hole punch and punched a hole in a slide to give it a spotlight effect, so that loon looked like it was swimming across the slideshow, or the screen on the slideshow. To showcasing our family adventure on this TV show. Nice. Nice, nice fish. We got an eater, the old man. Be close. Nice. One key to fishing any body of water is the ability to be flexible in your presentations. So while we started off with two ounce bottom bouncers with a variety of colors for uh, spinner blades, we had switched to mostly three ounce bottom bouncers and gold blades. There we go, number two for the day. You know what they say, gold spinner. You can use any color you want on Lake of the Woods as long as it's gold. So we're, uh, we're just out on this little reef pulling spinners, um, real simple. Anywhere from you know, 16 to 25 feet, we're finding fish and gold. Gold's kicking butt out here, hammered gold. And just drag them at 1-1 one, one to 1-3 one, and you're gonna find fish. It's uh, simple as that, can't beat it. We always look forward to spending time together, catching a bunch of fish, and then eating well. And one meal has become a constant on our trip. I think our family favorite is potato dumplings, pork roast, sauerkraut, and gravy. I made them, <laughs> so I can brag about them, I guess. They turned out really good. They turned out uh, the way I like them, nice and firm, and it did get a little uh, wild. I do, did uh, spend just about as much time cleaning up as I did cooking, but uh, you gotta stay focused. You can't have too many scotches, <laughs> so. Grandma, my mother used to make those, and I was the only one that got the, re the recipe. There's a lot of controversy around that recipe. Some would say grandma never writ, wrote it down, but I've got two written copies of my own. They're in her hand, so I don't know. Chad has the authentic recipe because he has it in grandma babe's handwriting. There is no controversy. I have a, uh, the recipe in grandma's handwriting. I have it in my dad's handwriting. Um, she, Grandma gave the recipe again to my mom and dad when they moved to Duluth or something for some reason, so I have another copy. I have a copy of Aunt Joan's hand, uh, handwritten recipe. Every one of them is different. <laughs> none of them are the same recipe. And I don't think Grandma used a recipe. I think she just did it by hand. The true, true outcome of those dumplings depended upon the consistency of that mixture which you could only figure out with your hands and the feel, and, and that you can't write down in a recipe. Uh, it's been kind of a contest of who makes the best dumplings from grandma. Uh, I love them so much, I actually uh, had a paper in college that I wrote about it and did a little video, and I actually brought dumplings into class to share with everyone. While we've had our disagreements over the years over trivial matters such as the best dumpling recipe, the tradition of our annual fishing trip remains. A tradition started and strengthened by preserving the memory in the form of a slideshow.
How's the camera work going, Dad? Hey, that's a wrap. <laughs> Woo! He found a new roadie. This is WKXRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> Funding for this program was provided by the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, Safe Basements of Minnesota, your basement waterproofing and foundation repair specialist since 1990. Peace of mind is a safe basement. Live wide open. The more people know about West Central Minnesota, the more reasons they have to live here. More at livewideopen.com. Western Minnesota Prairie Waters, where peace, relaxation, and opportunities await.